Oh, okay, well, you know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad. Hi, everyone. How's everyone doing? <laughs> oh, I love this. Okay, so uh, a couple months ago, well, two months ago, I, uh, I turned 44. <laughs> that took me totally into cougar territory. And, uh, but I like to identify as a, as a puma. <laughs> you know what? Because anytime I get asked out by somebody who was born after the Clinton administration, I oh, pull my pants just a little bit. <laughs> True story. Sorry, guys, that was a shit joke. <laughs> it's so great to be back in New York City. I used to live here. I moved here at 38 years old. But at the time, everyone was like, fuck this shit, I'm moving home. I was like, I want a challenge. Bring it on. And uh, I moved here for what I thought was going to be a steady and lucrative... Oh, there we go. I was just screaming. Uh, I moved here for what I thought was a steady and lucrative job, and it was neither. So I survived on the bag of broccoli a day diet, which also doubled as birth control. Because it turns out nobody wants a woman who smells like she's rotting from the inside. Uh, but I'm glad to be back, and um, I got a little confession. Aside from doing comedy, I have a little dirty side hustle. Yeah. In fact, people in my field, when we became more visible online, we started being treated like second-class citizens. Yeah. I'm a scientist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know what you're all thinking. She definitely looks like a scientist. No, nobody ever thinks that. In fact, I get told by a lot of people, you don't look like a scientist. And by a lot of people, I mean... Men. And it's usually in the context of flirting, you know, like trying to get to the fourth date. Uh, which I find to be an interesting tactic, because uh, telling somebody, you don't look like a scientist, is a very thinly veiled way of saying, sweetheart, you don't look so smart. <laughs> and sometimes I dish it back, like, well, you didn't look like somebody I was going to let butter my biscuits. But I guess we were right. But sometimes I play with them, like, oh my god, why don't I look like a scientist? Can you give me some reasons? And usually I can think of two, Bob here and Bobita. Yeah, I, I named my breast as an awkward 12-year-old girl, and I'm going to make it even more awkward and tell you that my grandfather, my father, and my brother are all named Robert. Oh. Folks, these are family names. They shall be respected as such. Keep your eyes down here. <laughs> Sometimes these men are honest with me. They said, yeah, you don't look like a scientist because you're not like an old white dude with a beard. And I have to point out the fact, no, the beard's coming in nice, guys. <laughs> it's the penis that's taking its sweet-ass time. <laughs> yeah, but they're not wrong. Uh, for years, it was old white dudes that had, you know, the access, the money to do the science. And that is when you get headlines like this. Hold on, i got to get into Bob. <clears throat> see, I fold it up real good. Oh, yeah. Sur this is also age. Surgeon counts nerve fibers of human clitoris for the first time ever. This was seven months ago, folks. <laughs> seven. Mm -hmm. It has over 10,000 nerve fibers compared to the measly 4,000 of the human baloney pony. Okay? 10,281 to be exact. Not that I'm counting. And some of you still can't find her. <laughs> oh my god, if that's not a definition of it's you, not me problem, I don't know what is. I feel like not being able to find it is kind of like a form of gaslighting at this point. <laughs> uh, but I think, and maybe you guys will be on board with this, America needs to sort of back burner the whole literacy rate thing. I mean, reading is it? It's overweighted, right? We all watch videos now. And we need to put our money where our mouth should be. <laughs> And focus on our literacy rate. Yeah! Who's with me? Yeah. And guys, guess what? It's not just humans. Snakes have this problem too. Yes, snakes. Four months ago, an all female team in Australia discovered that snakes not only have one clitoris, they have two devil's doorbells. Yes, and it's forked. The carpets match the drapes. Yes, what is right? The carpet matches the drapes. Uh-huh, and the males have a forked tongue. Oh. Yes, yeah. Odell well is right. That's a good time. Mm -hmm. I want to be a snake. <laughs> so folks, representation in science matters. If not for the humans, do it for the danger noodles. And <laughs> 
Jesus. <laughs> so the kind of science that I do is, is a fun one. I'm a primatologist. Oh. Yeah, not to be confused with proctologist, although I do deal with a comparable amount of shit in my day-to-day -day life. I study monkeys and apes. Yeah, yeah. And it's spoiler alert, all of you are a bunch of primates. So I'm taking notes. <laughs> Sir, I saw what you did before the show. Don't be sorry. I just, I feel bad for the banana. I mean, I didn't know it could bend that way. I, very appealing. Keep it up. <laughs> uh, yes, I study spider monkeys, specifically. Any spider monkey fans out there? Woo! <laughs> God, poor spider monkeys. That was a spider monkey call, by the way. If you do it well enough, they will call back. But they're terrible texters. And uh, that's actually because they evolved not to have thumbs. True story. Uh, but uh, they're not called spider monkeys because they were bit by a radioactive spider. It's because they look like a basketball head and orgy with a bunch of pool noodles. Just a fat little body with a bunch of limbs all, you know, splayed out. And uh, fun note, it's not just the arms and legs and tail. Females have what is called a hypertrophied clitoris, or a pseudopenis. Or if you're Phil Collins, it's the pseudopenis. It's a deep cut from your Genesis fans out there. Or genital fans. So which is the same. Then I never mind. Uh, but yes, they have this long, fleshy, lady finger like appendage that hangs from their undercarriage. Let's just put it this way, the males do not have to ask for directions, okay? They have a high clitoracy rate. <laughs> Bet you guys didn't know this was sponsored by the clitorati. So. Uh, but yeah, and, and, and we don't exactly know why they have it. We think maybe, you know, it's because they're just dragging their pheromones across tree branches. Uh, if you have a male dog, you know what I'm talking about, you know, because there isn't a square inch of the house they haven't dragged their dick across. <laughs> So uh, that is that, that's what they do. And I remember the very first time I saw a female spider monkey, I turned to my advisor and I said, dude, is hot. And she just whispered, she's, she's British, and she basically said, oh no, she just belongs to the big pit family. <laughs> and that is when I realized I had picked the right, right career. This was, this was not on my career day in childhood, but it was, uh, it was a good moment in time. But okay, so the males are not to be outdone, by the way. Male spider monkeys, they are unique because they lack a baculum. Does anyone know what a bat? We have a ringer in here, by the way. There's another primatologist in this room. Uh, does anyone know what a baculum is? And if you do, yell it out. Anybody know what a baculum is? Okay, it's a boner. It's a, it's a dick bone. It's a, it's a bone in a boner. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, a lot of non-human primates, in fact, a lot of mammals have boners with bones. Except, in the primate world, it's spider monkeys and homo sapien males. Mm -hmm. And if you do have a dick bone, please go get that looked at. And do not ask me to look at it after the show. <laughs> I'm not that kind of doctor and it's not that kind of show. But for a small fee, we can talk. Uh, but th yeah, they're not to be outdone. Uh, and as somebody who studies non-human primates, I like to look at the similarities and differences between our behavior, including sexuality, as somebody who identifies as, as pansexual. And um, folks, Nothing stains my clam more when I hear Christian conservatives say, homosexuality, it's just not natural. It's an abomination in the face of the Lord. No, Raylene. What's an abomination is your unironic mullet. Homosexuality is totally natural. And let me explain using your logic. Now, I went to parochial school from age 5 to 12th grade, okay? And something they really drive home is that God created every last one of us in his image. So if this same God created Lance Bass, Bert and Ernie, Wanda Sykes, the entire cast of Queer Eye, and Lindsey Graham, God is hella gay. Like, yeah, like so gay, like jazz hands and Jodie Foster gay. Like, like if, if, if John Waters took Brokeback Mountain and threw it on ice, starring Ellen DeGeneres, Johnny Weir, and the purple, Teletubby. <laughs> Still not as gay as your god. I mean, this guy dandy created rainbows and bottomless brunch in more ways than one. And I kind of like that. 
And if that wasn't enough to convince Raylene or Neil, anyone else, I would say, as a scientist, I know that over 1,500 species have been documented engaging in homosexual activity, right? But only one species engages in homophobic activity. And ironically, they belong to the genus Homo. So uh, please explain that to me. <laughs> in fact, those are just the species we've seen. Because I like to think the second I walk away from my monkeys, two old pendulous disco balls descend from the forest canopy. How how their monkeys are bringing out trays of, of poppers and cocaine. And Andy Warhol is in like the, the corner, like with his iconic banana, just doing lines off of Spider Monk and Monkey's Tookus. And it's just Studio 54, so, you know, right? It's one big promiscuous horde. That's what I'd like to think, you know? And our closest genetic relatives, bonobos, they're called pan paniscus, but they're more like pan promiscuous. I mean, we, they are literally our closest genetic relative, and the way they deal with all conflict guys is through boning, okay? Imagine, Tiffany steals your banana. You bum. <laughs> Kevin forgets to pick up your dry cleaning. Yeah, oh shit. Kevin's an asshole. You butter his biscuits. Susan kills your whole entire family in horrific circumstances. You write her a strongly worded email, then you fuck till Sunday. That is how they do. And it's not just males and females. Females do this thing called GG rubbing, which is just primate scissoring. And, and, and males will do sore fice or, or penis fencing. That is the scientific term. God, I, I hope you guys are taking notes because there is going to be a pop quiz later. Uh, but I'm pretty sure Billy Joel was wrong. We did not start this fire, guys. It was bonobos rubbing their tummy sticks together. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's, it's something else. And um, I want to tell you about my, uh, my favorite animal, the American buffalo. Putting the bye in Boston. Mm -hmm. These horny herbivores, up to 55% of matings are between males. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, it, and, and before you try to like explain the gay way, like a lot of these science to do, you know, if you're, you're cis hetero, internalized homophobic male, you might be like, oh, oh, no, no, Kevin's just asserting dominance on Steve. No, Dr. Vince, <laughs> Kevin is inserting dominance into Steve repeatedly, and Steve is coming back for second, thirds, and fourths. He is liking every second of it. And, uh, and, and, and you should know, it's the subordinate males mounting the dominant males because you gotta dress for the job you want. <laughs> Not the job you got, guys, right? And they wanna figure out why so much of the gay love making, one, they like it. You know, like it doesn't have to serve a purpose, okay? Uh, but it's actually because the females only wanna do it once a year. Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie only wants to do it on my birthday. But with Steve. <laughs> with Steve, every day is my birthday. <laughs> I love Steve. Oh. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, guys. <laughs>